and watch it hover. Check it out, is it hovering around? Today on Head Squeeze, we're answering the question, how do hovercrafts work? They're really, really clever bits of engineering, but the principles behind them is actually quite simple. And it's something that we can replicate by making our own little hovercraft model in our own homes really easily. We're gonna need a CD, some glue, a balloon, and we're gonna need the lid off of a sports bottle. The reason we want one of these is so we can got that kind of open and closable valve at the top there. So let's start making our own hovercraft model. Okay, first of all, you take the CD, your blank CD here, and what we wanna do is cover up the hole in the middle here with the sports bottle cap. Now, we're just gonna glue that on there, very, very simply. Like I say, we wanna make sure that when we start blowing air down through the middle here, it's not gonna escape out the sides. So we're ready to make our homemade hovercraft. Okay, to do this, you wanna make sure the cap's closed, first of all, blow up our balloon, and then carefully pop it over the top of the cap there um, without letting the air out. There we go, okay. Now, hopefully I can let go of that balloon and the air should stay within it, yes. Now, before we see what happens when we open up the valve and let the air out, if we use our, um, our drying example here from earlier, if I just flick this CD around the table, it doesn't move very far before it stops. And that's because of friction. That's friction that's slowing that down and that's the friction between the bottom surface of the CD and the tabletop. When we open up the valve on there, the air from the balloon is forced out through the hole in the middle of the CD. And as we keep pushing more and more air under it, there's only one place for that air to go. And that's out around the perimeter of the CD itself. Let's see that in action. You can actually feel just a little bit of air escape around the side of the CD. Now, when it's doing that, you get a really thin layer of air between the table and the bottom surface of the CD. So it's hovering, that the, the CD is then kind of floating on that tiny little surface of air. So as the air's escaping out, we've got um, a layer, a really thin layer of air that's, being, that's flowing out or all the way around the sides of the CD. And that's, that little layer of air is actually lifting the CD off of the tabletop. And by doing that, you're completely separating the surface of the table and the surface of the CD. And so that friction that was there earlier, with our other model with no, no balloon on it, that friction is now completely gone. Now, large commercial size hovercrafts, they carry people, uh, they carry cars, passengers across the sea and across land, um, but they work in exactly the same way. They're configured a little different, so let's have a little look at how they're built. It's quite boxy, this hovercraft, but you get what I mean. Oh, it would have its kind of massive fans at the back, which you, I'm sure you would have seen. Your bridge in here, where the captain is. Underneath, they have what's called a skirt. And here's, just the, here's the ground here. When the engine starts up on a great big hovercraft, they start forcing air down into this skirt. And the skirt acts kind of very much like you might wear a skirt yourself. I wouldn't necessarily wear a skirt, not uh, during the week anyway. Um, where it's attached, kind of attached to you around the top, but the bottom, it's left open. Ahem. And that's exactly the same thing that happens on a hovercraft here. So when the engines start up, great big fans force air down into the skirt. And just as we saw earlier with our model uh, on, with a CD in the balloon, there's only one place for that air to go. And because the skirt's open at the bottom, that air starts to escape out through the bottom here. So let's test out whether our model will also go over the sea. I'm gonna open up the cap again. So theoretically our air can start coming out. Right, we've opened that. Let's get it on the water again and watch it hover. Check it out, is it hovering around? It doesn't last that long because it's quite a rudimentary model. But for that little time, it did start to hover. And that is exactly what should happen. But that's it, there you go. The very basic principles of how hovercrafts actually hover.
you've tried out some of the experiments that we've done here on Live Experiments at home, then let us know. Let us know how you got on. You can do that in the comments section all the way below the video.